Я очень хорошо помню день, когда я приняла решение, что буду снимать это кино. Я была инициатором этого. И 24 утром, когда я проснулась... I remember very well the day when I decided to shoot the movie. It was my initiative. It happened on the morning of May 24, 2014. When I woke up, I switched on the TV and watched the news. It was the first battle for Karlivka. As a result, five people were killed. A photo of the first victim with a notched out heart had already been posted on the internet. Then his body was dragged through Donetsk on a hook. When I saw this cruelty, I'd call it sadism. I felt that the guys who took the battle were defending me. When I realized it, I wanted to know who these people were. This is a story about people who succeeded to stop the enemy in the summer of 2014, when routine forces of the Russian Federation entered the territory of Ukraine. An online broadcast of a documentary titled How We Became Military Volunteers by filmmaker Laura Artukhina in Kiev and Vilnius. My commander said that a new battalion was established in the armed forces. The beginning of the movie is very powerful. I pay considerable attention to people. The most horrible feeling is realizing that you might die. They are the best people I have ever met in my life. In order to embody public opinion, we need to visualize it. The similar situation is with culture, which must develop every day. Ukrainian journalist Yuri Butusov is confident. Only coevals are able to reproduce historical events with the emotions that are alive here and now. So we should write, shoot and tell about events in the country as much as the situation allows. Now not only is a new Ukrainian state being established, but a new Ukrainian political nation is being formed. Ukrainian journalists, chroniclers, documentaries and filmmakers are creating new Ukrainian history that will foster the development of the Ukrainian nation for many centuries to come. The documentary film How We Became Military Volunteers of Ukrainian-Lithuanian co-production was prepared for a simultaneous screening in Vilnius and Kyiv. The organizers are putting the finishing touches on preparation for online screening. Its moderators are famous journalists of Lithuania and Ukraine, Vitautas Bruveris and Yuri Butusov. The guys watched the film several times. I know it is psychologically difficult for them to watch it again, while the war is still going on. But this is a good reminder for all of us. When we started the space bridge, I felt that we had a holiday, but all the same the war carried on. This is the severe duality of our world. Although it is extremely painful, we should remember it. This support is of great importance for the heroes of my film. It is important for them to know that they are remembered and respected and that their deed is invaluable. The main aim of filmmaker Larissa Artukhina is to unite the international audience and create a dialogue between viewers. She has already conducted out a video conference on this topic in Riga and the US. We realize that the documentary is a precept for debate. We understand that movie critics and people who work in the film industry can discuss the nuances of the film and give it their professional appraisal. Screening of documentaries about average people and how they change what is going on with them and who Ukrainians are is a reason for people to look into each other's eyes. In order for Ukraine to develop, it needs a modern history, modern heroes and modern events. This is impossible to achieve without such films. It is said that there are only a few movies of such high quality. This is a bona fide deed. This is a high quality film that evokes very strong emotions in people. I had an experience. I showed one of my documentaries in Washington. It showed that the war in Ukraine is not understandable for the majority of people because Russia is simply spreading its propaganda. It falsifies information about the events occurring in Ukraine. Russia confirms that the invasion of the routine Russian army is a civil war. We can change the situation only by showing documentary films about this war. In the modern world, documentaries are gaining more and more popularity, and they leave greater impressions on people's minds and hearts than any other films, even top-notch productions. It seems to me that it is truly excellent work, because there are such documentary shots that cannot be reproduced in a feature film. A documentary film has a stronger impact on people's minds. There are such scenes from which you cannot take your eyes off from the very beginning. 
viewers agree that today a film about volunteer soldiers in this format is necessary for all those interested in Ukraine. This is a collection of individuals, captured emotions, phrases and details. Such dialogues between absolutely different people who have a different outlook on the world are of great importance for us as well as for them. It is very important for them to know that they have not been abandoned, have not been forgotten, and that they play an important role in society. This is also important for foreigners who receive information in the local news channels and are subjected to Russian propaganda. We should show a real life, true stories and emotions. That is very important and makes sense. Ihor Mikhailishin is a native of the ivano frankivsk Oblast. He was a participant of the Euromaidan as a volunteer on the front. He survived the horrors of war in Ilovaisk and was held in captivity. He is fluent in both the Ukrainian and Russian languages. I persuaded other guys to join me to fight in the war. We enlisted in the Donbass battalion. Then I persuaded guys who took part in the acts of protest in Euromaidan. I think that Ukraine is a unique country, because two different people can speak different languages and understand one another. Those who fought in the hot spots in the front talk about the war with moderation and unwillingly. But Ihor confidently says he found true friendship in this critical situation. There were also minutes of joy at the front when Ihor played the piano. My troops and I were not afraid because we were confident that we would stick it out and win the battle. The fact is that we had to stick it out. An excellent piano player came here and you can see his portrait on a playbill. When I was at the front I never searched for the instrument. A piano was there wherever I went. It was on the front, on the bass or in the battalion. I thoroughly enjoyed playing, especially after battle because I could relax and it gave me pure satisfaction. Aside from that, it allowed me to go deeper into my thoughts. In both halls, viewers are scrutinizing faces of those who survived and those who died to defend their country. A rhetorical question, is everyone ready to sacrifice one's life for the sake of an idea? I think that the best people went to the front, and I do not want to mention the number of soldiers that died fighting for our country. There are people who are alive only on the screen. I think that all of these people did everything possible to save our lives. Having taken the task of shooting a film about volunteers in those difficult times, the authors of the film set a goal of showing the phenomenon of the emergence of national unity and patriotic self-awareness. We always cooperated with each other, we kept in touch and thought how to create the story. Each of them is a personality, and at the same time they differ from one another. So it was very important for me to tell people who truly volunteers are. When they returned to Novi Petrivci, they were really upset. A new volunteer battalion was being formed also in this village. I came there, met the guys and interviewed them. When I talked to them, I understood they were the blossom of the nation. They were those who took up arms to defend their country, their families, and me as well, and also preserve their dignity. It's really interesting when documentary filmmakers come to film us, because it has a great significance. This film will live more than one day or one year. I think it will live even after we're dead and gone. The movie is a memory. It conveys sincere emotions and passes the baton to future generations, just as soldiers of the Ukrainian insurgent army and Holodny Yar passed on to us for posterity. Alexander Hoshelik is one of the characters in this documentary. He plays one of the youngest volunteers. He went to the war at the age of 18. For him, the war is a clot of emotions. I did not tell my parents that I was in Ilovaisk. I told them that I'd done my military service in Kurahovo. My father learned that I was in Ilovaisk, having visited my page in a social network. Alexander says that he suffered so much fear during the war, but he's confident that he will find the strength to overcome all his fears and leave the tragedy behind him for good. But most of all, he was afraid that he would die in battle. 
And when I reconciled with such fate, I felt better. At that moment, when the enemy opened fire on our military convoy, I did not understand how serious it was. But when I came out of the shelter after we were shelled, I was overwhelmed with emotions. I got to the village of Krasnoselsky and helped find our soldiers. When I said I'd come down, I realized it was truly horrifying. I began thinking about what I had already achieved in my life and what I would not manage to do in the future if I were killed in action. I still can't believe that this war rages on in our country. For me this was difficult to accept at the time and today I still cannot accept it, because seeing this on a movie screen is one thing. But later you realize that this is happening in real life. For example, you're editing a video of the war, but in reality it is happening. Filmmakers spent a lot of time shooting these fragments. They collected source materials and soldiers adjusted to the filmmakers, cameramen and film directors. Three years later, the work on the documentary was completed. This film is about ordinary people, who were the first to be sent to the front. Дермонтов, кто такой Пушкин? А он стоит, говорит, Александр Сергеевич, писатель. Да нет, я не в этом плане. Это все полегли. I think that they succeeded to capture the moment that became crucial, at least for me. It was a moment when I was apolitical and when I could not remain apolitical any longer, because I was involved in the Euromaidan revolution and war. Because according to Toller, a nation was built during the events on Euromaidan, while a state was built during the war. This documentary film makes us plunge into the events of the past again. Every time I watch this film, it takes me back to bygone days. It brings out in me the very same emotions that I had at that moment the war was going on. I think that it is quite realistic and possible to release this documentary film by using all the materials available. There are a lot of full episodes and plot lines, which comply with the standard cinematic format. Truth or fiction in times of war? How can the public view an audience discern the truth from outright lies? Documentary filmmakers took on themselves the huge historical responsibility of creating a film that will remain interesting, relevant, honest and objective for people over the entire course of history. I witnessed how these people struggled for their state during the Euromaidan revolution. I saw that they sincerely volunteered to defend their homeland and Ukraine's freedom. What else did we have to ascertain? Did we have to find out that routine Russian armed forces entered Ukraine and occupied our territories without declaring a war, or how separatist groups were established and started killing innocent citizens? Now, over the three years I have watched this documentary film, my heart still bleeds because it depicts very emotional moments. I'm I'm quite sure that I will be inextricably connected with this film for the rest of my life. The Russians not only launched armed warfare in our country, but also a spiteful and dangerous informational war. For this reason, certain information that Ukrainians see provided through the mass media does not convey the real facts. In truth, it is nothing but pure lies. I think that probably half of the news, or even more, is broadcast to the people so that somebody can benefit from such an informational war. It is almost impossible to lie in a documentary film. Of course, you can make a mockumentary, the way Russians started doing 10 to 15 years ago. Initially, it was pure amusement for them. As a classic example, they shot a mockumentary about the fall of the Tunguska meteorite. Such mockumentary videos were also used in the news, completely falsifying reality. So in this way, Russian television and President Putin destroy culture and disrupt and undermine the confidence of the people. That's why our main objective is to restore confidence of the average citizen or establish a certain degree of credibility by making a documentary film that reveals the truth. Our goal is to establish the absolute credibility of documentary films and instill in people total distrust to Russian television. <laughs> Closing captions on the screen. The film screening came to its end. You can see smiles as well as sadness on the faces of all the viewers. But young cinematographer Sasha Chuprina is full of optimism and is absolutely sure of a positive result. 
хотела сказать, что у Украины большой... I would like to say that Ukraine has a promising future. I believe in it. People of different ages who surround me are really unique. I believe in this, and I see changes happening everywhere. On the one hand, there is betrayal everywhere. On the other hand, there is victory everywhere. So what is important is which path we choose to take in life. Важно, в какую сторону мы будем смотреть. Online discussion of the film How We Became Military Volunteers in Kiev and Vilnius is a brilliant and obvious example of how much we're able to explain to the rest of the world. Now Ukraine is perceived as a new state, as a self-sufficient nation and an independent player in international relations and policy. Of course, we need to take advantage of all the means, worldwide broadcasting and the state's information policy. But first and foremost, we urgently need to establish horizontal ties between civil societies. The more such initiatives we take, the faster we will establish dialogue. The better we are understood by people living abroad, the stronger Ukrainian society and the Ukrainian state will be. In short, this will ensure a brighter future for Ukrainians.